すぐにとどめをさせリングから離れろくなくなれ Vegeta's final atomic shine was an attack that he used against Rygor in the Dragon Ball New Age manga done by Malik Studios. I'll have a link to that in the description below if you want to go read it. I asked artist and animator Audie Loki if he would like to take this on and animate Vegeta doing the final atomic shine against Broly and Frieza here in the Dragon Ball Broly fan movie part two. Without a doubt, he took it and it was just absolutely amazing. Now, I did have to mix in some of my own scenes just to kind of make it flow. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. I guess I did actually kind of make a mistake. But first, let's actually introduce Adi Loki. Hey. Hey. So, okay. So let's talk about this. First of all,、um, why did you want to take this on? And let me know a little bit about your creative process. And just, I want you to just run with it and talk a little bit about, you know, what was going through your head from start to finish. And we'll play clips here of your creative process, your sketches, and everything as you're talking. Yeah.、Uh, so basically, what、um, inspired me,、uh, I, I, I really wanted to do something Dragon Ball. Like, I've never been good at Dragon Ball. Uh, or at least not the art style, but I really wanted to do something just to because I'm, I've been really inspired, but I never really had the skill to like pull it off.、Uh, but recently, I've like I've gotten better at, at adapting to art styles, and I, and I actually managed to do a decent job on this animation. My thought process was that、uh, I wouldn't, I didn't want to go through the whole struggle of doing a one or two minute clip for my own channel、uh, and risk it not getting. Any views and、uh, not being,、uh, you know, technically well executed、uh, as a story. So I thought the best way of getting to do just a little Dragon Ball was through、uh, one of your projects. And that's why I really wanted to do this. And I really like drawing Vegeta as well. So this was kind of the perfect animation for me to do. Yeah. See, what a lot of people don't understand, there is. There is so many animators out there that do unbelievable animations, but it's like they'll spend a, a large, like months or weeks making like maybe a 10 to 30 second clip of like something happening and they'll post it to Twitter or something like that. But on YouTube, like if you post a 10 to 30 second animation, like I don't even think you can monetize、uh, like anything less than like 50 seconds or something like that. And、yeah. if there's no ads on it, like YouTube isn't going to share your video.、Um, so pretty much like that. That's one, of the, that's one of the major reasons that YouTube just like dumps on animators is because they want like 10 minute videos. And it's like, God, how long does it take to make a 10 minute animation? It takes,、like、yeah, a yeah. it takes like a year, you know?、Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is, it, it is great when, when animators come together and kind of splash content together, but it's, you know, it's still really hard. It's one of the, like, I, I really hate that YouTube just shafts animators. I mean, there's some guys、yeah. out there who are so insanely talented, like you. And like, that's why we're, we're doing this video、uh, to try and get you guys exposure because. I mean, there's so, there's so much talent out there that just like it doesn't get seen、um, because of YouTube. And、yeah. so let's talk about、uh, you're primarily a One Piece animator, right? Your favorite animator、yeah. is Natoshi Shida. Yep. And yeah, and it, he, he is working on a Luffy vs. Kaido animation, which he's been in the works for, God, how long now, dude? Been working on、uh, too long, too long. I've <laughs>、uh, been working on it for over a year now,、uh, but that's honestly. Like, so much shit went wrong, like, to which ended up delaying the project. So, like, what? Like, for example, Mermo's computer, who the, the guy I'm collabing on this project with,、uh, it, it died like early this year.、Um, and instead of me progressing extremely slowly working on it alone,、uh, Mermo wanted me to just focus on my channel and other stuff.、Uh, So that we can work on it together once he comes back. And he came back just a few months ago, like at the end of this,、uh, this summer. So good so to have him back. <laughs> good to have him back. Yeah, we, we're working on it now,、uh, getting a lot of stuff done, actually. We were, I don't know how far we are in cleaning, but when it comes to just sketch and storyboard, we're almost finished. So we have about eight and a half minutes right now, and it should be nine to nine and a half minutes when it's finished. 
Eight, eight and a half the, minutes of sketches or of cleaned animation? Uh, both. Uh, of sketch because some of it is cleaned oh. uh, and some of it isn't. So it's eight minutes. Yeah, that's really exciting, man. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait for that video. That video is going to blow you guys up. And you're going to split it into two parts, right? Yeah, so it's like four minutes, uh, a little over four minutes on each part. And you're going to release them like at the same time, like or the next yeah. day or something? That's cool. Yeah, same time. So yeah. people can jump from one part to another just instantly. That's good. That's good. Yeah, like, yeah that's going to that's gonna break the internet, bro. That's going to be the best fan animation so. on the internet. Easy. <laughs> Easy. Uh, so, okay, let's let's talk about the <clears throat> the final Atomic Shine. And uh, first of all, when you were sketching uh, this out, what was going through your head? Man, uh, I, I was looking at, uh, this was obviously, a, like you mentioned, uh, an attack from Dragon Ball New Age, uh, the fan manga. So I really tried to like think of if I saw, if this was to be animated by uh, an animation studio, like how would they build up the anticipation? How would they uh, build up the attack? Uh, how would they, uh, you know, give it the correct impact? Uh, and how would they direct the scenes? So pretty much uh, the thought process was first the scene charging up these giant blasts and really showing how destructive they are just by making the environment break and how this, in, in this uh, flow of wind effects and electricity everywhere. Um, and then afterwards, the weight, the weight, it's sh- like the, <laughs> the weight behind just Vegeta throwing them, like showing how heavy they are, just huge balls of destructive energy. And then them mixing together with uh, the wind effects and the, and, you know, the flow and the speed, which was depicted through the, through the wind effects and the, the speed lines in the in the sky so like pretty much anticipation showing uh, weight and then also showing the speed of the attack that now, was pretty much it what i wanted like i think the best part about your animation is the blast actually flying through the air with all the speed and everything yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i'm curious as to how you pulled that off like how did you how did you structure that when you were designing it I don't mean to brag, but uh, something that happens to me a lot is uh, I just try something out and it just works. Uh, so what I did was, uh, I, I it's hard to explain, but it's like I just tried, I've, I basically just tried something and it happened to work. And then I, uh, and then I figured out as I was animating it that if I, made it go forward and then instantly backward it would look like it's like pulsing forward with a like a huge amount of uh, power and then also i made these drops i don't know if you can notice it but there's like drops of energy going towards the screen which helps it feel like you're following the 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 blast yeah, uh, definitely feels like you're following the blast fly through the sky. Um, yeah. And how did you like? What about like the the wind effects? Give it Man. this sense of like the camera is turning, um, which I thought yeah. was really awesome and interesting. Like, how did you design that? Because that's very like uh, mathematical. Yeah. So uh, the the blast starts off by mixing right and then merging, and then it's slightly slowly but surely like pulsing forward and then goes more up towards the left before it comes back to the camera. So the wind, the, the, uh, the, the, the whole thing with the wind was you basically have to make them really short and really, um, really fast when, or not really fast, but like, uh, at, at a normal speed when they're coming towards you. And when they're from the side, uh, and they're passing by the camera, you'd have to make them longer so it looks like they're from the side and I don't know how to explain it, but just so it looks like it gives the illusion that it's uh, being viewed from the side and the camera's kind of changed and also uh, make them go faster. So it looks like the, the speed itself of the, the speed of the, of the ball <laughs> of the blast itself has gone even faster and more powerful. So why did you, when you have like, so you have the camera following the blast and you have the blast kind of turning and the camera turning, why did you choose to keep the sky static? That was my, my biggest question. 
uh honestly uh i was too lazy to animate the sky <laughs> and it just it just happened to look right or just happened to work with the blue sky with the sky standing still uh so there's really no no point otherwise than not wanting to re-animate the sky so that's why i depended on wind effects to show it moving i think just just some idea of what you could have done with the sky for one like as the blast is flying out from the screen you could have tweened the sky maybe get yeah. it slowly bigger and then as the blast moves what you can do is like you can take a sky um jpeg or whatever that you have and like copy and paste it next to each other flip it so that it makes like a very long sky and then you turn that into oh. a symbol you turn that into a symbol, you give it a horizontal blur, and then you turn that into a symbol and you put it on a tween from one frame to like sixth frame going all the way across. And then you get yeah. this like, you get this effect that the sky is moving like super fast and like the blast is like flying in like warp speed pretty much. And mm -hmm. it, it only takes like a minute to do. Um, I could show you how to do it sometime if you want. Really that, that's, uh, yeah, I know what you mean because I've seen uh, you do it. I've seen Mermo do it. Uh, so I was, I was always like, I knew it was possible to do just within Animate CC, but I have no clue like how to do it. But it, it's actually pretty easy now. It's super easy. Yeah, I mean, pretty yeah. much any any picture, like any landscape you have, you can elongate just by copying and pasting it, putting it next to each other, and flipping horiz flipping one of them horizontal. And yeah. they'll connect and they'll just all of a sudden it'll just become longer. I guess I, I love like when when Frieza and Broly's eyes like disappear like that was that was really cool. <sighs> and the explosion was just like ridiculous. So let's talk about the explosion, because yeah. when, when you first showed me that, dude, my jaw was like on the freaking ground. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> I went and I actually like I went and got some like unique sound effects like just for just for that shit, because like yeah, yeah. I felt like it deserves something special. The explosion itself was amazing. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory that it, it's just like very high frames to really make like it, it burst right yeah um but what what really caught my eye is like the way that you did the the laser beam like <laughs> that shit was just so ridiculous like how it kind of like shoots and then like fades out and then like blinks and then the explosion happens like did you yeah. get that inspiration from that somewhere did you just try that like how did you figure that scene uh out? so the the whole principle behind the uh, I, I know I use I used the whole impact star thing building up. It's almost like physics can't comprehend the blast. It's like it's like stuck. I can't explain it, but it's like it's like when you, you see in a in a in an anime when they're punching a wall and then the the wall shakes and nothing happens and then it explodes. It's like this and this kind of illusion of anticipation. Yeah, just yeah, helping it build up. As for the beam itself blinking, I, I honestly just tried it and it worked. That's that's the that's actually what I just do. It just happens to work. Yeah, but it's, yeah. Sometimes it's. I mean, so you didn't you didn't like take inspiration from any animators for that uh, scene? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, the the um, if you if you've seen One Piece, uh, there's a scene where a character named Ray League mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, shoot uh, like blocks uh, an attack from one of the admirals and it flies into a tree and there's this huge explosion um which is actually done by Naoto Shishida so that's actually I just had that in my mind when I was doing it like man that that really helped like when it was done in one piece there was n there was like nothing there's like a tiny beam and then uh, going through the sky and then suddenly like a huge explosion covering the whole screen so that's kind of the idea behind it uh was kind of i got from one piece yeah and uh wh i have another question like so at the end of the explosion i actually extended the last frame like for like two yeah. seconds uh and just added camera shake because a lot of times like with explosions like if you have if you have camera shake on like you can't really tell that much that the smoke uh, is like expanding you know what i mean um yeah. it kind of looks like the smoke is like moving when it's not uh if you have camera shake over a still and i wanted to kind of like extend that frame because 
Um, yeah, it was short. It was short. And, and like a, the transition from like that, the end of the year explosion going into like Goku's face, it was like too fast. Like you couldn't even tell what just happened, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and, and when you've worked with me before, you've done that where you do these like super high frame scenes and you put them on like ones and twos, right? <laughs> Why don't you kind of slow down your framework a little bit uh, to, so that people can actually see all this gorgeous stuff that, that you're making? Like I know, yeah. I know sometimes, yes, you do want high frames because that's how you get the better animation. But um, at the same time, do you ever like want people to actually like see all this work you're doing? You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, one of the biggest problems, which I just didn't figure out how to solve before, uh, was that uh, everything just happened so fast. Like I put so many frames, I put so uh, put so many scenes, uh, but everything just went by so extremely fast. So recently, like on Luca versus Cairo, for example, uh, I've been adding threes and fours and and twos, uh, you know, instead of ones and twos. Uh, I, I usually stay of, uh, away of uh, ones uh, unless there's like a really fast smear or something on a character yeah, uh, or, or some kind of blink. Right now, uh, I've gotten used to using threes and fours because really it doesn't make that much of a difference when it comes to the animation. If you go into fives, it does make a difference, but like... Fives is threes and fours are smooth enough. Yeah, yeah. Threes and fours are smooth enough, in my opinion. And also, I've learned to not have still frames that only last for one point five seconds. They don't. Then now they last for four or five seconds, and I know it's necessary. Like even if that, it's just to make the video longer or make it last longer. Man, it's necessary for just like serving the, you know, showing or showing. the, the what's it called like it's like the pacing you will yeah the pacing the pa- giving yeah. getting the right pacing for the right moment basically so yeah i've learned to recently i've learned to get back get better timing and pacing in my animations to make it longer and more appropriate yeah i i do i do a lot of of framework like a lot of testing uh with with every scene mm-hmm. like I don't really like threes that much. I mean, I feel like it works on a lot of scenes, but at the same time, like I don't like constantly just using twos. And so like sometimes it'll, uh, I, I always try this first. I'll do um, uh, three, one, three, one frames. So instead of yeah. doing like all twos, I'll do like, like for example, one of the coolest things I like doing now I've figured out you can do is you can convert a tween into frames. So like if you have a, t- if you have a tween that's like two seconds long, you can uh, right click the tween and do convert to frames and then you convert it to every other frame. And so it puts your whole tween on twos and then what, oh. yeah, it's cool. And then what I'll do is I'll extend the two and that to make it a three and then I'll delete the, the next frame of the next two. So I'll make the whole thing three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. And that can actually add a really cool effect. Doesn't always work, but when it does, it's really cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, sometimes using combination of twos and threes is good, but I feel like usually like if your whole scene is on threes, it just kind of like looks like lag, you know? Like I think that some frames you can definitely yeah. make threes. You definitely want to, but you don't want like the whole scene to be on threes. No. Um, but I, I mean, it's just my, that's just my own opinion. It, it could also depend on the scene. Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends. Yeah. It depends on the scene. Yeah. And ones is just like, it's so much work for like one twenty fourth of a second. It's like not even worth it. You know, <laughs> you'll watch anime, like a lot of anime and, and even, we you know, Western cartoons, like they, they use a lot of threes, man. Like it looks choppy. Um, yeah, but it's true. like, it, people actually get to see what what's happening you know it's like sometimes you put so much work into that too and it's like your, your brain doesn't even realize it's there it's like you can put stuff on twos and it'll usually make the animation look smoother but it's like people don't actually get to see all your work because it's yeah. just it's like too smooth i don't know i mean there's a lot of the framework framework and pacing are a big a big part of you know, making one of these huge animated productions. Do you want to talk about your channel, about your, what your goals are, what you'd like to do, sure. stuff like that? Basically, my channel is named is uh, my name. My, <laughs> my channel name is Studio Loki. Uh, used to be Audi Loki, but that's kind of just my uh, online uh, identity. Um, but my channel's name is Studio Loki. So the whole thing with my channel is uh, I right now I'm focusing on 
uh, fan animation and fan art. Uh, that's my, what my channel is about right now. In the future, probably going to see some original stuff from me. Definitely, you're going to see some One Piece stuff on my channel, some some uh, good One Piece stuff on my channel, and you're going to see some good. Uh, you may see some good Dragon Ball stuff too someday, <laughs> because I recently gotten very comfortable with that now. <laughs> so, my goal uh, for my channel basically. Have you heard that, uh, you know, Gusu? He did a scene on the the Naruto episode 60, Boruto episode 65. And, and to me, that's pretty incredible because he was, he's, he's an internet, internet animator and he animated over the internet. So I have, like, I have my whole other deal of goals when it comes to like my own, like, like my life when it comes to animation school and like the animation business in Norway. But for my channel, which I look at as a hobby, which I spend a lot of time on, my goal is to eventually do one scene on one anime. And, I, and to get there, I think I have to do a lot of good animation and do a lot of, and you know, get a lot of followers. So that's kind of my whole goal with YouTube. It's yeah. basically to, yeah, it's it's a challenge for even the Japanese masters to mimic so many different styles. I mean, that's why you see so many inconsistencies in anime. Um, like you'll have like uh, One Piece um, animators coming over to, to, to Dragon Ball and all of a sudden Goku like looks wonky, like it looks like Luffy a little bit or something. Yeah. Um, it's it's I mean, it's kind of crazy. Like when I didn't know anything about animation, like I didn't realize like when I was a kid, I didn't realize that there's so many different artists right that draw the same episode and make yeah. it all look like fluid but when you become really knowledgeable about animation you can very notice like you can easily notice the differences in the character like throughout the one episode you know but it's mm. it's it, it's a struggle for even the masters to be able to draw any character like perfectly and that's why you have supervisors who correct their work. That's just something that takes years and years and years and years of practice and learning the authors of all these like, you know, crazy huge manga that have turned into like shonen anime. Um, they have like their own kind of unique style and it can really be like a challenge uh, yeah. for even the masters to get that style down or it usually just takes them like a lot of time. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a really good idea just at least for like learning and expanding your own abilities like as an artist and an animator is like to try all those different styles and I think that's mm. one of the aspects that makes a great artist and animator is being able to adapt and change their style and do all these different styles you know on top of their own like for me I you know I struggle a lot like with my own style and like finding what I like, uh, like what works the best for me. Like, to be honest, I still don't really know. Like it, I've done so much playing around with it, like, you know, for Soren, for Demon Rush and stuff. Like I must've redrew him like a, like a million times just like trying to figure out my style for this character, for this show and trying to figure yeah. it out. And it's like, I think I got it, but like, I'm not really sure. Like, cause my problem was like, I drew too much Dragon Ball. Like I've been drawing Dragon Ball for like over 20 years. So yeah. like, it's like so hard to break away from that. And that's, I guess what I'm saying is being able to mix it up will like help advance you, you know? So I think your whole idea of doing like one animation for like each major anime or whatever is, it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah. So what I'm uh, what I'm planning on next. I don't know if there's any fans here, but like uh, after Luffy vs. Kaido, I want to do a tiny one or two minute animation of uh, Seven Deadly Sins, uh, which will be pretty good. Uh, and also, I want to do something uh, Dragon Ball as well. Uh, so I I want to uh, after Luffy vs. Kaido, I'll be steering a little away from One Piece basically to work on other stuff. And other fan animations. Yeah, the problem with there's there's only one major problem with this uh, methodology is that every time you do that animation, like you're gonna get all these fans. For example, like One Piece, like when you release Luffy vs Kaido, you're gonna get like at least fifty thousand, maybe a hundred thousand subscribers. Maybe that one One Piece, and they're gonna be like, "Do more. Where's the One Piece? We don't want anything else. Yeah. We just want One Piece." Which is you know a, a fault that I've that's happened to me as well. When I try other things, everybody's just like, "Where's Anime War?" Like, I don't care or, you know, yeah, it's just, but they'll have to live. I mean, your true subscribers will come for anything you put out, you know, just, yeah. I mean, that's why I think that's why like doing your own like original show is probably like the best because like you get people who want like your original content and are there for, yeah, yeah. for your own show, not just like whatever, like the, 
the mainstream anime or whatever it is that you're animating, you know? Everybody go subscribe to Audi Loki. He is gonna, he's a fantastic animator. He's gonna be releasing some unbelievable things unlike you've never seen before on his channel. And he's gonna be one of the, he already is, but he's gonna be well known mm -hmm. soon as one of the best animators on YouTube. Go show him some love and subscribe, check out his work. And thanks for stopping by.